I've been testing, reviewing, and using lasers for the last two years, and I have never pushed a laser this hard out of the box. In this video, I'm gonna push the Sculfin G9 to really test its limits. I'm gonna challenge myself to see how many items I can customize in just two hours. But before I exhaust myself, let's unbox the machine and talk about its features. Oh, and hang around to the end where I'm gonna share some tips and tricks using the software and some jigs you can use to speed up your workflow. You're not gonna to wanna to miss it. I'm Ainsley from Small Fry Creations where we tackle everything DIY and let's roll the intro and get to work. Golfin G9 has dual laser beams, a 2 watt infrared and a 10 watt diode, and that means you can laser just about anything and ridiculously quickly. The 2 watt infrared beam is going to take care of your metals like stainless steel, copper and titanium, as well as plastics, stones and ceramics. And your 10 watt diode beam is going to take care of materials like wood, leather, cardboard and painted surfaces, just to name a few. The Golfin G9 can engrave with speeds up to 5,000 millimeters per second. Yep. I said millimeters per second. Blink and you're gonna miss it. Skullfin's also got you covered for when you wanna be batching out your projects as it features a magic button up here that allows you to simply switch out your material, press this button, and the machine is gonna repeat its last job. This is the Skullfin Rotary Pro Max, and this is an accessory you can pick up with the G9. As a rotary, you'll be able to engrave on all of your cylinder objects, and by pairing this with the G9, there's not a surface you won't be able to engrave on. If you are interested in seeing the Rotary Pro Max in action, be sure to be subscribed to the channel, as I'm gonna do a video dedicated to showcasing just the rotary. This next feature might be my favorite, and that's the portability of the laser. You can easily pick it up, customizing on the go, making it perfect for places like markets. Now the features of this machine are fantastic on paper, but how does the machine perform in the real world? Skullford have been nice enough to send me a ton of material to test on the G9, and given that the marketing for this machine is all about speed, I thought why not put it to the test and see how many things I can engrave in just two hours. I've got everything from leather, metal, hip flask, you name it, I've got it, we're gonna test it. My aim is 100 items in two hours. Now, just before we get started, I want to let you know that I'm going to be using this Skullfin software, which is free and included with your laser engraver. And all I've done so far is unbox the machine and spend about 30 minutes getting used to the software, understanding the materials and putting some things through the test. So this is going to be a great test for the G9 straight out of the box for two hours. What can it achieve? So let's head over to the stopwatch and get this challenge underway. Oh, I'm nervous. I don't know why I'm nervous, but I am. Just the pressure of the two hours is already getting to me. So this is gonna be interesting. There's no other way to do it, but to do it. So let's press play on the two hours and get to work. Let's go. All right, what do I think I'm gonna start with? I think I'm gonna start with the metal because I tested that in that 30 minutes and I know how to use it. So I'm gonna start with that. I need scissors. I already feel like I'm rushing. One of the things I love about this laser is that as soon as you turn it on and you open up the Sculfin software, it automatically gets found. I don't need to worry about connecting the laser, it's connected out of the box. I really, really like that feature. Let me do a little check-in while the laser is running. I have got an hour and 18 minutes to go. I don't know if you can see that. And I have got 10, 20, about 25 things lasered. The next thing up that I wanna do are these leather patches. 
these leather patches. Now in the background, I've had a 3D printer going to print a template where this can just sit in and I can go one after the other after the other. And I'm hoping I'm really gonna start to make some good time. So let's head over to the 3D printer, get it, hopefully it fits and I've designed it right. And then we can use it once this guy is finished. But let's go check out the 3D printer. Hopefully this guy is gonna start to make up some real time. Let's go see if it works. All right, moment of truth. Does this fit? Perfect. Okay. All right, so the point of this 3D printed template is that I can put it straight into the laser and I can just batch out things because these leather patches, I imagine people are going to use them for businesses and they're going to want 10, 20, 30, even more of that at a time. And this means I can just keep hitting that magic button and going one after the other. Let's start to make some really good time and start to get these numbers up close to 100. the saw different? Oh, you know why? Because I was on red light, not blue light. I want diode because it's leather. Okay, let's try again. I've got that on blue. Let's go again. So in the Sculfin software, you choose whether or not you want the red light or the blue light. And if you have two separate objects like I do at the moment, I've got the saw blade of my logo and then the small fry creations, I need to make sure that both of those are set to the right light. What I had going on before was blue light and red light. So it's all a learning curve. Also, I'm trying to rush because I've got almost an hour and I am 34 pieces in. So I'm down to needing stuff almost at a minute a piece to be honest by the time I find the what I'm going to put on them I have no planning on what I'm going to put on each of the things I'm doing that as I go I'm also filming for YouTube so the pressure is on this is starting to look better we're now cooking with gas and because I've got that 3d printed mold I can just start batching these guys out one after the other after the other and hopefully pick up on some time All right, it's update time. I've just ticked under 30 minutes to go and I don't think I'm gonna make my 100. I am trying to pick up pace and move as quickly as I can. Keep in mind, I have done none of the designing that goes has, that has gone into any of these things. I am doing it all on the fly. I am at 58 items, which leaves me with 42 to go, which means I need to be under a minute, well under a minute for each of these items. I have got these metal things that I think are like balloons. I've got a happy birthday sticker that I'm gonna put on them or engrave on them. And I'm just gonna see how close I can get to the 100. I wanted this to be a real test. I wanted to know just how far could you push it. I have done no material testing. I've been adjusting my settings as I'm going to really dial them in. But let's keep moving. Let's see how close we can get to the 100. All right, come on, five minute push. Let's go. How many can I get? Let's go. I'm gonna change to hearts after this. It's probably a bad idea because it's gonna waste me time, but I've got just the same. I've switched to hearts because I wanted to do this saying, dreams don't work unless you do, which is perfect for this test because I'm trying to get to 100. I've got two minutes to go. Come on, let's go. All right, under a minute to go, let's go. I've got one, two, three, four, that's five. Can I get one more in? Can I get one more in? Three, two, one. Bingo, bango, done. Oh, that's amazing. That is two hours of labor intensive work because I am filming for YouTube. I am trying to decide what I'm gonna put on them. I'm lining everything up. I'm trying to dial in my settings. That was a lot. Where did we end up? I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight rows of 10 and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I got to 88. 
That's amazing. I know it's not 100, my goal was 100, but 88 is still fantastic. The machine has coped effortlessly. I have not had any issues at all. It has done everything I have thrown at it. But I have been going at this now for all day, plus these two hours on the test. I need to go and catch some Z's, collect my thoughts, and then I'm gonna tell you about it. One thing that I will note is that the entire time this has been running, it has been running off a portable power station. I haven't been running off mains power because I think one of the things you're gonna do with this machine if you get it is take it to a market or a show where you wanna be able to personalize your items. So you're not gonna necessarily have access to power. I've been running it for the last two hours. It was at 100%, it's now at 91%. So you could easily be running this all day, I think, and being able to personalize things. But I'm really happy with the results. I know it's not 100, but I did get to 88, which is kind of a cool number when it's all said and done. But I'm gonna go and catch some Z's, collect my thoughts, then we'll come back. I'm gonna tell you what I really think about the machine. I'm gonna give you some tips and tricks of using the software and some ways that you can speed up your workflow if you are gonna pick up the machine. But let's go and catch some Z's. All right, I've had some time to think on my thoughts on the Sculfin G9, and there's a lot I love about the machine. There's also some stuff that I don't love, which we'll get to in a little bit. But the machine is built tough. It passed the durability test with flying colors. 88 items in two hours means I was lasering at about one and a half minutes per item, which is really fast and a great result. If you are gonna be batching out your projects, I would strongly recommend to speed up your workflow making a template. You can 3D print them like I have, you could laser cut them, you could even hand make them out of cardboard. But this coupled with the magic button means you're really gonna to start to be able to speed up your workflow and batch out projects. Now, since I've done that test, I've taken some time to really start to learn the software as well as create some more projects so that I could really understand how the machine performed in detail. The first design that I've made since the test are these hip flasks, and I'm really happy with how these have turned out. Each engrave took anywhere around about the two minute mark, and I was able to personalize them with some really great designs. They're very, very clean, and the detail is great. A little tip for you if you are doing stainless steel, use some Barkeeper's Friend and a magic sponge just to clean them up once they've come off the laser. That will remove all of the laser dust and really makes the design pop off the hip flask. The second project that I've made since the test are these leather coasters. And once again, I'm really happy with how these have turned out. The detail is fantastic. The laser has done a great job making the design pop off the black leather. I'm really happy with how they've turned out. Each coaster took about a minute to three minutes depending on how detailed the design was. And it's pretty clear at this point in the video that I really love the Sculfin G9. But let's take a second to talk about the stuff that I don't love about the machine. The stuff I don't love about the machine really has to do with the software. At the time of recording this video, you can't currently use Lightburn to operate the G9. I think it has something to do with the red light and the blue light and being able to switch between the two. So you're limited to the Sculfin software. Now the Sculfin software has come a long way since I used it with the IQ, but there are some still major upgrades that I think need to happen before I love this software. Let me run you through the two major drawbacks with the software, and then we're gonna wrap this up and I'm gonna tell you overall my thoughts on the machine and who I think this is perfect for. The first thing I don't love about the software has to do with designing because the tools within the Sculfin software are extremely limited. You really want to have made your project in a different software and then import it into the Sculfin software to run the project. For example, when it comes to text, you can't access all of the texts that are on your computer. You are limited to what Sculfin have loaded up into the software. I'd really like to see an upgrade where you can access everything on your machine because this can be really annoying. If you're at a market or you're trying to personalize on the go or in person, person, you're going to have to take the time to do it in a different software, import it in and then run the project. If you could just do it all within the Sculfin software, it would make life much easier. The second thing I don't love about the software has to do with your material settings and when you're importing your projects. Every time you import a new graphic or object, your material settings reset back to the default, which is probably going to be the wrong settings. For example, if we look at these hip flasks, I would import my first project, set everything to stainless steel, set the laser to run, and then when I wanted to still do a hip flask but change the vector, it would reset back to the default. So if I wasn't careful in paying attention to what light I was on and what material I had selected, Selected, I was going to set the project running with the wrong settings. It is really annoying. It is something particularly if you're moving really fast and quickly, you really want to pay attention and double check your material settings before you hit the go button. 
The best thing about the stuff that I don't love about the machine being software is that all it requires is an upgrade. Skullfin is fantastic at listening to their customers, taking on the feedback and making adjustments as they need to. And the more people that use the Skullfin software, I'm sure they'll continue to work on it and provide those upgrades, making it much better than it currently is. And this machine is proof that they listen to the customers because I think the G9 is a much better refined version of the Skullfin iCube. I have reviewed that machine in the past. I will link it above if you wanna go and check it out. But this machine is much tougher, far more durable, and is a much better refined version of that iCube. Who do I think the machine is for? I think it's for someone that wants to go and buy bulk items online and engrave them really quickly, or there's someone that's already got a laser machine and they're going to make the, the projects on those lasers and then they want to take this to market and impersonalize it on the spot. It's a really great little machine, especially if you're wanting to engrave quickly. I'm really happy with it. Now, as always, if you want to purchase a G9, I will leave links in the description below if you do use that link to make a purchase. It does help out the channel and I thank you for that. And I hope you have enjoyed this review. If you have, you can help me out by hitting those subscribe and like buttons and I'll see you on the next one.